But coming up next on the AM uh, show, the Amasaman Accra uh, stretch has been notorious for traffic. What exactly is causing it and what can be done about it? Mama Vio Usu Abwaji has been on that beat and she actually has this report. We're telling the story of the Amasaman traffic, the courses, and of course, how we can fix it. Here's DSP Vincent up here. He's the MTTD commander in charge of this area. Um, so thank you so much for your time. You're uh, we've been observing the traffic situation for a while, and we've realized that the roads are a major factor because of the bad nature of the roads. Vehicles are not able to flow freely when they get to a certain point. What has been your own observation? Well, uh, my observation is that the amount of traffic we've been experiencing on the Usawam to Amasaman stretch of the road is as a result of three factors that I have identified. That is road engineering, road engineering, misbehavior of uh, the commercial vehicle drivers, that's the trotro taxi drivers, and then pedestrian crossing. Then, of course, the fourth one I will add is, is police, police access. Yes, it's, it's also another factor. But the road engineering actually takes about 60% of the cost of the traffic on the road. This is because there is a, a, a pothole just at uh, Amasaman bus stop. Very big pothole, as you can see. So, when the vehicles get here, they are not able to move. Especially the long tracks. As you can see, when they get here, they have to slow down. The big tracks will slow down. Maybe the small cars will also have to walk, slow down. If you look forward, you can see that the street is moving. It's moving. It's because of this place. That is why the vehicles are not able to come. You understand? So if this place is fixed, if this place is fixed, we wouldn't experience, we wouldn't experience heavy traffic like that. Because when we are directing traffic, we normally give priority to the main road. So when we open for the Sawam Accra vehicles to move, more vehicles will be allowed to move. So you wouldn't see traffic. But right now, even when we open for them to come, because of here, they will not be able to read the traffic light. As you can see, there is space there. So this is the major factor. The bad nature of the road here. That is causing the heavy traffic from Isawam to Amasama. Okay. Then I also mentioned the total damage. Yes. As you can see, they, they have they are fat there. You know. And then the the bus the bus stop is already full. Okay. It's already full. So those who are coming, they will not get a place to park. Yeah. So they are compared to park on the one lane of the road. That's blocking those who are coming. So they will not be able to uh, move freely. As you can see that vehicle there, it's stuck on the road. This one, it was a place to park, but there's no space. So it is slowing down the movement of the vehicle. You can see the bus there. So that is the second factor. And then the pedestrian crossing. If you can see from your back, you see that people are crossing from that end. People are crossing from that end. Can, can we take a walk a little? Because after you talk about that situation, I also want to show you something that I've okay. observed over the yeah. period. So the pedestrian crossing, as they are crossing, the vehicles will be stopping for them to cross. So the vehicles will not have the chance to move. And then if you go forward, the same thing. You also go have a place. So the, the crossing is also hindering the free movement of traffic. Then the last one I talk about is the absence of the police. Yes, that one, I agree. If we have enough policemen and we detail them on duty here, they'll be able to control 
the activities of the tractor drivers. Mm. Hey. So in this case, when the tractor or taxi gets there, he will not stand there for long. He will only drop passengers, pick passengers, and then move. Okay. But right now, because we are not there, when they come, they get stopped there, and then they will be loaded, preventing other you know, drivers from having to place to work. To pack, uh, load and offload passengers. Okay. So that is what we have. Okay. That is what is actually causing the heavy okay. traffic from the south to the Amas Amas. Yeah. Okay. So this is the, the spot where you talked about the pedestrian crossing. Yeah. So this is supposed to be the the thing that slows vehicles down, yeah. but obviously they yeah. don't slow down. Yeah. And then you find the long tracks yeah. just crossing here and overturning all the time. That's a result of the, the port goes there. Okay. You know, when they get there, they don't see it early. So the moment they see it, uh -huh. and they, they, they want to swerve it, before we realize, <laughs> they lose balance, and then the vehicle turns. <laughs> And, and then the back is and that is what happened to the tanker and then the oil truck that we are talking yeah. about. He didn't see the port, by the time he saw the port, he tried to serve it, but he lost balance. Yes, so it's the same thing. So again, the problem is the road. Yes, so if the port roads are fixed, I think it will, it will solve it. Okay. Let's talk about the, the pedestrian crossing again, yeah. where you also say it's one of the factors slows down the vehicles. Yes. So here too, as you see, as they are coming, they are coming individually. Uh, you see that this one it has stopped. You see that the vehicles have stopped. <laughs> you see that they have stopped for the people to move. There is moving. Others are coming. When they also get there, the vehicle will stop. So <laughs> for the whole period, almost about every three minutes, they have to stop for the pedestrians to work, to move. But all is as a result of the bad nature of the road here. If the vehicles are moving faster, you know, it will restrain the people from crossing by heart. But because the traffic is not moving, they also get advantage to move. So you can see, just about three minutes ago, you see that the vehicles have stopped. And then they have to cross. You understand? So here, Either we, we put the police here or even the community policing assistants who have been helping us. But normally, the community policing assistants, when we put them, the drivers don't obey them. Yeah. But I'm just, I was just going to say that for some reason today, I don't see vehicles driving on their shoulders, but there's one that's pulled his face yeah. coming right there. Yeah. But again, the absence yeah. of police, otherwise, yeah. this will not be happening. Yes. And it's also because of the road. So if the road is, is moving, obviously they, they, they will not do that. But when we get a police around, they will also not do that. So with all these things, they need police presence. How are we going to get police everywhere? So we as drivers, we have to behave responsibly. You understand? We have to be able to pass. You, you can't line up police on the road everywhere. It's impossible. So we have to be responsible to ensure that we do the right thing. That, that vehicle like this, we are not better than those who are on the road. So why do you want to pass on the shoulders of the road? Because the police are not there. You know, it's, 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 it's unacceptable. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk about the, the things that you can fix because you're the commander in charge. I know that you don't have all the men to put on the road. Uh, but since we've identified some hot spots, at least, in the interim, what are you doing to fix it? Yeah, in the interim, what we are doing to reduce the traffic by 40%, as I told you, in my own estimation, by 40%, we need additional personnel to control the situation, which I have already done. Yes, I have informed my authorities and they are taking the necessary action to give us some men, at least for now, to manage the areas. I have, I have identified the areas that we need the men in place okay. so that the traffic will move. So if 
we get the men, we put them at those places. And I can show you that it will remove, it will reduce the traffic from Sawam to Amasamai by 40%. Uh, but as we've been standing and talking, I realize that the traffic is still building up. So what time does it get better? From well, I mean, just about 2 p.m. Then the road will be a bit free. So now that we're familiar with the challenges as outlined by the Amasaman MCTD police commander, I have the MCE, the municipal chief executive, uh, who will give us answers to the many challenges outlined. Uh, so I would like to say thank you so much uh, for making time, Mr. Wilkinson. Uh, first of all, this pothole, that's almost looking like a manhole. When is it going to be fixed? Because we see that it is the main cause of the traffic, at least when you get here. It's slowing down vehicles because once they move past this, they flow. So this is a problem. So when are you fixing it? Um, thank you very much. Um, if you said, uh, when am I fixing it? The road has been awarded to a contractor and the contractor is already on the road. But um, um, there was a little challenge um, that is why the contractor put a stop to it. And I'm sure yesterday um, I met the director of highway and he promised that in the next month they're coming to do the party so that the cars can flow on the road. When you say next month, is it May or June? Oh no, we are in April, right? Yes. So May, that is May. And they're coming to do that. You know, we, we have cleared the women from the roadside. And all of us, we are aware that before the traffic was so heavy but now because we have cleared the women from the roadside and the cars are getting the space to park it's making everything easier for them but because of the potholes so the cars slow down on the road and that is why we are having a little traffic this morning today is wednesday and you know mondays wednesdays there's a huge traffic on this particular road so that is what we are seeing now. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure when the roads are a little bit packed and we don't see those um, potholes, the traffic will stop. Yeah. How does it make you feel, especially last week when people were stuck in traffic for hours, just crossing Amasaman to Pokwase? And we've always known that this is a challenge. Why do we wait to get people frustrated? This road is about 17 kilometers from Ufanko to Insawem, 18 kilometers like that. And the 18 kilometer road has been awarded to a contractor. Which uh, the minister we, don't, we don't see the contractor on yeah, site. Yeah, but which the minister assembly have a limited action taken on it. But um, we are doing our best. At times, we we'll, we'll just pick a, 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 a tipper truck to do some fillings. But those fillings will not last even two days or three days. It will wash away. Right. So now we are, we are appealing to the contractor as well. I being the municipal chief executive, oh, I'm, I'm saying that I'm appealing to the contractor. It should come to our aid because this is a gateway to Accra. You can see the cars that are coming. Every morning, I can, I can tell you a lot of heavy trucks come around. Tipper, heavy trucks. And people are coming all along from the 11 ranges of the country. Then they'll go through Amasaman. So we are appealing. We are appealing to the contractor to come around and help us to solve the problem. Here we are now at the main Amasaman traffic lights. Still connecting from Insawem to Pokowase. Uh, the MTTD police commander is still with me, DSP Vincent Apia. And this is a hotspot, uh, DSP. Because if you look across, where there's also another terminal, that lane gets so full that late afternoon, you see that they've also taken another side of the road. How are you fixing this issue? Yeah, that issue is also as a result of uh, the misbehavior of commercial vehicle drivers. You know, that place is supposed to be a bus stop and not a station. But when they get there, some of them want to park there and be loading. So for several minutes, they are there. So when other vehicles come, they don't get a place to move in. So as usual, we need the police to control them. Uh -huh. So it forms part of the request that I have made. So when we, are, we get men, we will detail police matters, especially in the evening, from 2 p.m. up to 7 p.m. 
so that we make sure that no vehicle stands there to load. When you come, you drop your passengers. If there are passengers there, you pick them, then you move. So when the police is there to push them from there, there will be space, and the vehicles will no longer queue on the road. So that is the plan we have for it. When we get a man, that area to we will attend to it. Okay. Yes. I would, I'll ask the MC about the market because there's also a market there, and I don't understand why there's a market there. There's a market uh, inside the township itself, and then you see the hawkers also come to the roadside sometimes. Is All this right. a temporary marketplace or this is permanent? This is a uh, unauthorized market. Unauthorized. Uh, yes. So unauthorized. it's illegal. Yes. They are there illegally. Um, unauthorized market. So why are you tolerating them? No, we are not tolerating them. You know, they are a little bit hiding from... Even if you are not careful, you will see, right? So when a contractor, uh, I mean, get rid of the shoulders of the road, those people, were, they are there. And it's, it's, it's good for us now because we are still preparing a place for them. It's better than they being at the shoulders of the road. Okay, so you don't yeah. have a place for them? Not yet. We are, we are now preparing the place for them. And those here, we have asked them to go to the main market. Because the main market is empty. They came to the roadside and now they have gone. But those people here, we, are, we have asked them to be there and we are going to make sure we are going to get a better fit for them. Right. Okay. Let me go back to the commander uh, on the traffic on the traffic issues. Uh, this is the main uh, traffic light where we see pedestrians crossing. We see vehicles also make a U-turn. Is there a plan for this U-turn because it also causes traffic? We see the big buses, the Ayalolo and the STC also make their turn here. Is there a plan? Yeah, um, right now what we have decided, the right time we met the assembly, we, we, we made that discussion that if we can close this U-turn, because my information is that this U-turn was initially not there. Vehicles from Accra entering Samoum, I mean Amasama, will have to go to Toma and take the U-turn from there. But when they created the Ayalolo terminal, then they opened this place for them. So you can see that it is causing a lot of traffic because the nature of the road in Amasama town itself is very narrow. It's very narrow. So vehicles are not able to, to park anywhere. Uh -huh. So if these people also join in here, they go to add up and they are not able to move. So they end up blocking traffic from Sawam to Accra. Uh -huh. So not until there is space. Not until there is space for them to move into Amasama. We don't allow them. But before you realize the traffic has gone as far as to Pokwasi, because the traffic is not moving inside Amasama. Uh -huh. So we have discussed it with the assembly that if this U-turn can be closed so that we shift it to Toma. Uh -huh. But that too, they need to actually fix you know, the U-turn properly so that the vehicles can easily move. If they do that, I think it will ease the traffic at this intersection. Okay, and I have to ask you a personal question though, uh, because I see that you have few men, but you're trying your best to fix the, the challenges with the traffic. Uh, what kind of toll does it uh, have on you and your men? Trying to manage with a few personnel, uh, with the, I mean, for how long can you be standing here and be helping people cross because the traffic lights are not working? All right, uh, one, uh, in the long term, in the long term planning, I think uh, Amasama needs a footbridge. Needs a footbridge. Maybe they are about to construct the road. Maybe because of that, they may not do it. Maybe when they are constructing the, the new road, then maybe they will, they will put up a footbridge. I don't know. But if the road is not going to be done now, I think we need a footbridge to ease you know, the pedestrian crossing. And then we are challenged with personnel, as you are saying. We have very few personnel, and they come to stand here for a longer period. Uh, as I'm saying, for now, we don't even run charge office. The charge office for the MTTD, we have collapsed it, and we brought them to the traffic. So even accident investigators are seriously complaining, because they have to go out to do accident investigation, attend to victims, go to hospital, the cause of and then when they come, 
they made their entries in the docker and then they have to enter it in the stationery, which is supposed to be done by another person. They are always complaining, but I made them to understand that because of the nature of the traffic situation, we have to, they have to bear with us for now. Once we contain the traffic situation, we have informed the authorities when more men are brought, we will actually do that. And then if also when more men are brought, as I indicated earlier, we will be able to bring the traffic down at least by 40%. And the 40%, as I stated, the bus stop there. We will put policemen there to check the commercial vehicle drivers. Do you understand? Morning and then evening rush hours, we will put there. There is also bus stop here, as you can see there. The police also need to be there. Can we, can we? As you can see, the vehicles are not moving. It's because the truck drivers are parking there and they are loading. So we need the police there to control them so that the road will be free for the vehicles to move. Then if you come here, the same thing in the evening, we need the police to be around there so that they can control the truck drivers to make sure that they don't load at the bus stop. You drop and pick and move, but they don't stand there and use it at a station. So when the police, more men are brought, we will we, 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 we detail personnel there and they will control them. And then here is a pedestrian crossing. Where in, we are standing. Yes, yeah, there is a pedestrian crossing, the bus stop. So as they come down, they will be crossing anyhow. From here to there, everybody is crossing. Yeah, but if there is somebody to control the pedestrian, what he will do is to what? Encourage the drivers to move at a faster speed. And that will stop the pedestrians from crossing anyhow. So at the point in time, they will stop the vehicle and then the pedestrians will, will. So all these things, you know, when we get a man, we'll be able to work at it and then the traffic situation will ease. But the 60% of the traffic, as I indicated, is the pothole at the bus stop there. Mm. If that area is fixed, I think the traffic you see from Sawam to Amasaman will be off the road. Well, we thank you for the work that you do, uh, even in view of the challenges that you're faced with. So thank you very much, DSP. Thank you, too. And uh, whilst we're still here, I want Razak to focus on the traffic lights that are not working, and this one that is broken. Mr. MC, I want to ask you yes. why the traffic lights are not working, and we are forced to have policemen do the duty of something that traffic lights could do when they have other duty to do oh, in right. their office. The traffic light was disconnected because the contractor, um, they were here to do certain things. And originally, because the place is for the Ayalolo ambulance and the um, um, STC, now those, the traffic light is not working. The reason why it's not working is simple. Um, that, I mean, the contractor is on the road, and um, but, they, but you, they, I mean, they are working on the road. I appreciate that. I, I, I appreciate that this has been awarded, and I respect that. But there are no contractors on the road, and the traffic light that has been disconnected, this one almost pulled down. It's not working. We can't have the police do the duty of traffic lights. I've, I've, I've asked about this particular. I've, I've asked the question you are asking, and I asked the contractor. Right now, we are having a man standing here. Instead of, instead of a robot, she do that for us. People, men are standing here um, directing traffic. If you see what is happening right now, I don't think it's proper. So I've asked the contractor if he can refix it for us for the meantime, so that the policeman will not be wasting time here from morning to evening, which uh, they might they can do another thing elsewhere. So, so, so give me, give me, give me timelines so that I, I can hold you accountable. I, I always don't like to give timelines of something that I'm, I'm not going to do it. If you said I should create the women from the road, I will do it. I will give you a timeline that tomorrow I will create them. In fact, you said three weeks and you did it in like yes, three days. Like three days, you know. So this one is across. And these traffic lights, I'll, I'll call the contractor today. I'll, I'll make sure I'll call the contractor today and ask him. But did you know something? The, the, the traffic light is, is at only one side, not the other side. So when it happened that way, if you are not careful, the people will cross from here and they'll be thinking there is another traffic light here. So the traffic light was meant for the Ayalolo bus and the STC on the left hand. 
So right now, but if I, you are but not I see, But I see another another traffic light there, uh, Arazak. Let's capture it, where they are selling the song. Yeah, I mean, the right. one here, before it was, you know, we have a bus stop here. Okay. And they did it, well, if you stop here, it will give you a red light. That you have to move, you have to move, you have to move. It's not for the crossing. Right. It's not for the crossing. So that is why I'm finding it difficult if this traffic light is fixed again right now as we speak. If you are not careful, the MTTD have to go and stand here. And here there will be a traffic light here. And the people will be crossing. And if you are not careful, something else will happen. So we will wait the two and see how best we can do it. But I realize there's another manhole. This one. This manhole, yes, yes. Um, we called the contractor. We wanted to come and... We wanted to come and do the filling with uh, um, um, uh, gravels, but they said no. Uh, tomorrow, maybe by the weekend, they are coming to fill it with um, a bitumen. That is why we have hold on. Because I think last time you guys asked me about this particular manual. So if they are not coming this weekend, then I will use the gravels to do it. I like the fact that you also acknowledge it's a manhole. Yeah, it's a manhole. It's not a pothole. It's a manhole. <laughs> <laughs> It's a manhole. I the, believe in that. If you go ahead a bit, there's also a market. Yeah. Is it the same situation as what you explained? A temporary yes, place because you don't have a place for them. Because we, we, we have asked all the cars that they have goods to park there and offload their goods there. Like if you are coming from the eastern region with your plantain, yam, cassava and everything, don't stop here. But go and offload them there. That is why you see the women there. So the women will, will, will buy it from the, I mean, from the bulk uh, I'm a sellers. Uh, so that one too is a separate team that we have done to manage the traffic condition from the area. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so, so I... So you see we are doing good management in Amasaman. I'm keeping my eyes on you, sir. And that's my community traffic watch, if you like, highlighting the traffic challenges of Amasaman and also looking ahead to how they can be fixed. We've heard from the MTTD police commander. We've also heard from the MCE who is uh, detailing how they intend to solve the problems with the traffic, which largely is because of the nature of the roads. The roads are poor. So I will be focusing of this, on this and be giving you the updates in terms of the progress that's been made. One of the other issues that we've identified, even as uh, you know, we were having the conversations here, has been the traffic lights, which has been, which been broken down for I don't even know how long. Uh, but we are told it's because uh, of advice from the contractor. The road has been given out to a contractor to fix. But for some reason, the contractor has not been on site. And so we're still having to deal with the potholes, which are almost manholes now. This has been Mamavi Oswabwaje reporting on the traffic challenges.